Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer. Welcome back to Pro Soccer Manager 2019 Career Mode, episode number 90. We've got one important stage left to go in the Giro, and then the final sprint stage. Unfortunately, very suddenly, Avenipol's fitness peak has ended. Mater, Felchi, they've been, and Garfield. The, all three of them, for days, have been yellow without the the white outline. Avenipol, just yesterday, the outline went away. Just yesterday. And today, the fitness peak is gone. So, that is worrying because, well, if he has a bad fitness level today... We've got three monster climbs. So even though we're in first place, this race is not over yet. Not over yet. Uh, we've still got something to worry about. And not helping is that Dianigi has caught a cold here as well. And then I've got some dossiers to take care of prior. We only have six points left available we're not going to be at, able to add a bunch of riders i mean we're, we're kind of looking at one maybe two riders added to the squad at best so uh, looking at maybe high end is there anybody six points no uh we get michael matthews who's five points tish Benut is a maybe but I think I'm pretty good on Classics Riders now within the team. So if I mark... Neo Ito. That might be a good addition. He's only three points. He's 22 years old. Clearly is set to improve. And he's got good potential. So Ito might be a good one, uh, but what else is out there? Hodeg, it's a bunch of sprinters at the moment. Moscon, not a chance. Mohorch, got Popple. Micah is five points. Scott Davies, 75 mountain, 77 time trial. Not very good uh, elsewhere, but that 75 points, he already likes this. and would only be a two-point addition. Okay, we'll put him in. Uh, Jansen would be a one-pointer. Put him in, that get, gives us three points uh, to go after somebody else. And we've got Tim Valens. Valens might be a good one. There you go. All right, folks, here we go. Stage 20. Sixty-five k to go. We're about to hit that first climb. Eleven kilometers, eleven percent. This could decide the race right here. If you get dropped on this climb. It's it's game over because you could lose ten, fifteen minutes easy. I've got everyone set to seventy-five, and that's a little slow. Let's try to up the tempo just slightly to a seventy-seven. Felchi's a little slow. He's not as strong of a climber, so he's going to have to push a little bit harder to try to keep up. One hundred and twenty-three left in the peloton already. It's shrinking quick. There are seventeen in the breakaway. Their gap at six minutes and holding. Felchi's the furthest one back for me, and he's 
on the verge of getting dropped here. He's going to have to really step up the pace a little bit. Okay, things have backed off a little bit. Save his legs somewhat here. Peterson, the first one for us to begin to fade. He's going to get dropped. He was protecting Gottwald. Okay. Dianigi is the next to go. Felci, make sure you don't go backwards. Gino Mater. Chill. Hang on for a little longer, if you would, please. Garfield. Same with you. Gottwald will take over in a moment. Up to seven and a half minutes. These guys have lost contact. We're down to 48 in the peloton. Felchi is just about done here. Venipol and McNulty both have plus threes today, which is not good, but it's tolerable. McNulty's going to have to accelerate a little bit here. Last K. Last kilometer to the top of this climb. These guys will recover, but Felchi has been dropped. Climb a little faster and you can latch onto this group and maybe regain contact. Okay, we'll set you to auto. Here's the top. 27 riders make it. Twenty-four riders. Oh, come on, McNulty. There we go. Regains contact. So it's noses downhill, which will allow the riders to catch their breath. Love to get water, but it's a small group. Got Walt, you can do. There we go. All right, final 40 kilometers. We're in the valley right now, in between climbs. The next one, 10K, 11% again. So it's shorter than the last, but it's got the same characteristics. Eventipol fully recovered. McNulty is nearly fully recovered. Got, well, got a decent amount of recovery done. Uh, let's slow this down a little bit. Looks like 83 is enough, 82 is enough. Then a pole kind of just hanging on at about 81. Let's slow that to an 80. We're catching breakaway riders. Bernal is attacking. He's nine minutes, so I'm fine with him attacking. Formolo, Martinez, Carapaz, Bardet. None of these guys. This is all. Yeah, 11 and a half, 17, 11. Eighteen, eighteen. Yeah, you guys go for it. Sosa, Store, Katana. Looks like he might be attacking. Do I need to? Let's switch this up. Mm -hmm. 
He's not. So slow down. Watch a car. There's Yates right there. He's pulling away a little bit. Okay, McNulty. Oof, he's pulling away a good little bit. That's Yates attacking. Where the heck is... There's Lopez right there. Yates has sat up and he has not left this group. So all we need to do is ease our way back forward a little bit. If he accelerates, we don't want to be this far down. And now we can sit up. There's no reason for us to do chasing. There's the last four riders ahead of us. Can't quite see their names. Not from here anyway. So now Yates is doing the work. This is good for us. 3k to go on this climb. Just 15 in this group. Now we can see Zacharin, Moss, Uran, Grosschartner. Yates is doing the work himself, and this is fantastic for us. We've got him marked, we've got him covered. Through a tunnel, 1.7k. Speed things up for a little bit. So we've got to reel in the brake, and now things are going to get interesting as we come out. That is still our Adam Yates, yes. Oh, McNulty's done. Uh, dang, 800 meters. Okay, try to follow. Make sure we don't get dropped. Yeah, we're okay. There's Lopez as well. It's now Bardet taking over. Gotta sit up here. Just eight in the group. McNulty, not in it. Boy, he got left way behind in that final 800 meters. All right, this is the front of the field. Lopez is here. Yates is here. We're joined by... Oh, now we're up to 11, so now they're not showing me anymore. It was convenient. You got Bardet. It's back to 17. And McNulty's back. No, I don't want you to lead. I don't care about how far away we go. I care about protecting our lead rider. Okay, McNulty, I don't think you're going to last terribly long, so let's go ahead and use your gel now. 15k to go. 18 riders in the group, and we begin... The final climb of the Giro d'Italia. There's still every opportunity for a two minute gap to open up, so we've got to defend Gross Schartner, Zacharin. Yep, yeah, I don't care. It's Lopez right here. Yates is behind us at the moment. Nulti's gel kicks in. Sosa leading Bernal. Bernal I'm not worried about. He is too far back. He won't cover enough gap. But Yates and Lopez right there. God, keep an eye on them. Two away, and their gap's opening up. Who was it? It was those two, right? Zachary and Grosschartner. Yeah, they can have the stage. Couldn't care less about them.
speed things up for a little bit. 10k to go. Only 10 kilometers left. Here's the actual banner for it coming up. Alright, here it is. Big acceleration. Yates and Lopez both going. It's 9k. We got plenty of time. There we go. They sit up, but Lopez continues on. He's the one we got to cover. He and Yates. Nolte's not going to last much longer. But he's getting us a good distance. Venable's got to take over. 37 seconds. 36. 6K. Now this is really hard because the Venable can't really ride for 6K alone very well at all. We're down to 9 in the group. 40 seconds. He can win the stage. We just can't lose by more than a, about a minute 40. So slow it down. Let's see if somebody else will pick up the reins. They will. Yates. Yes. Okay. Katana. Carapaz. It's just Yates that I care about. And we got to watch that time to the front. To the front of the field. It's out to a minute. 3.5k. Out to a minute 10. Like I said we can afford to let it go to about a minute 40. Gel. It's a minute 28. Okay, minute 40. 2K to go. And in 46. I got Yates covered. What I need to do is not let this gap get any bigger than it is now. So now we ride to defend the leader's jersey. Seven hundred meters. Congratulations. He resisted the comeback of the pack and enjoyed his win. Lopez takes the stage. Second place is still available. And we brought it down enough. We'll finish fourth on the stage, but we were close enough that he won't take the jersey away from us. Adam Yates takes second on the stage. Katana takes third. We get fourth on the stage. Bernal fifth. Carapaz, Landa, Bardet. But we conserved enough energy. Thank you, Adam Yates, for riding there for 1 or 2K, which did enough. Gap opened slowly, but only slowly. And it was enough to get us to the end, and we actually ended up closing it back down by 20 seconds once we took over there in that final kilometer. That should be enough. I don't want to celebrate quite yet, but it certainly looked like we're going to be opening a bottle of champagne tomorrow. Here comes the rain. McNulty finished 15th on the stage. He'll have lost some time. Hopefully he's still in the top 10 at least. And here are the race highlights that we've selected for you. Minute 22. A minute 22. We... That's, that's okay. 
It is enough. Remco Evenepoel is going to win the Giro d'Italia. We just got to get there in one piece. One stage to go. Miguel Angel Lopez finally claims the stage and rides away from the field. He should have dominated this race. Best climber by far. Adam Yates, okay, contender. Bernal should have done better, but clearly was not in the right form for this race. And Sky spent too long with him and Sosa equal before Sosa finally started riding for Bernal. George Bennett, right where I would expect him. Good rider, but not good enough. Not at those guys' level. Carapaz should have been higher. Quintana, well, okay, it's Quintana. <laughs> you could say a lot about Quintana, whether he should be up there or whether he's right where he should be. He's such an anomaly in the sport. McNulty hangs on to 8th place, almost 17 minutes behind. Bardet is ninth. You always can argue that he should be higher than that, but at the same time, he's not quite elite. And he spends a lot of time choosing breakaways instead of... He'll lose a ton of time on a stage. He's He's got issues with the kind of rider who pushes too hard and then blows up and then loses time. We didn't blow up. We lost time. But we limited our losses by managing, minimizing a loss. Landa's another one who's, you know, arguably a contender, but then is never quite there. And nobody else, right? Solaire, good young rider. Uh, Sosa, good young rider. Formolo, you know, that whole group, really. A lot can be said about any of them. Avenapol should have been among those guys. Or just inside the top 10. McNulty should not be in the top 10. And Avenapol should not have won this race. But in one stage and one stage only, did we lose any time? And that was today. There was a few seconds a couple of times. But today we lost, what, a minute 20? We did just enough. Here, there, everywhere. And everybody else blew up in one stage or another and lost a chunk of time. Lopez and Yates, they were always in it, though. They were always tough. But they each had a bad stage. And would you call today a bad stage for us? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, let's say we did what was necessary. And it worked out in our favor. Points classification... We keep the lead. Lopez is close. Uh, Viviani is the one we got to pay attention to. We're 34 points ahead of him. He's got a chance tomorrow if he goes after sprint points, but uh, my guess is he'll just go for the stage win and accept that he's going to probably finish either second or third in the classification, which means we probably have the points classification. KOM's going to go to Enrique Moss. Best climber, though, you can see right there. It's not me. Lopez and Yates beat us through and through to a lot of climbs. Looking at that, Moss was a breakaway rider. Don't count him. Martin, Martin, Ciccone, breakaway riders. Bernal, Yates, Lopez, myself. The rest of these guys in the top ten were all breakaway riders through and through throughout this race. So... There's your four best climbers. Bernal, Venepoel, Yates, Lopez. And Lopez had double our points. He climbed much better than we did. How did we beat these guys? They're clearly the class of the field. The time trial helped. Time trial made a big difference. But we did not win this race from the time trial alone. Under 25s, first and third, seventh and ninth to go with it. And team classification, we hang on to third, though that gap opened up <laughs> significantly on this final stage. Movie star is going to take, take team classification. Sky has got a close second. We're 10 minutes behind, but then it's 40 to Astana. Let's uh, finish this thing off. 
final 30 kilometers here of the Giro d'Italia. It's an interesting stage the way this is set up. It's in the city. It's actually a crowded city, unlike most of these types of stages that just kind of throw a few buildings together. But you get a few random objects cutting through uh, places where, like here, you've got cross streets of audience kind of overlapping into the road. So uh, there's some awkwardness about it, but it's a good effort to actually try to get uh, a complete stage in. Breakaway has five riders. One of those has already split off. The other guys are down to about a minute on their lead. And as we roll into the final 20K now, pace has been hot the whole stage. Uh, it's been very aggressive. There are riders off the back, not many, but there definitely are riders. Uh, it was raining quite hard at the start of the stage. Uh, Garfield crashed. My, my heart skipped a beat for a moment. I, I feared that it was a Vettipole, but it was Garfield. And they actually just caught us probably 25, 30 kilometers ago. Uh, eh, no, it was longer than that. Maybe 60 kilometers ago. Uh, but, it, you know, it, it was a good 100 kilometers that those guys were behind the peloton before they actually caught up to us. So now 18K to go. Getting a bit closer. Uh, I will go sprint train style, but the closest thing to a sprinter I've got here is uh, Mads Peterson, who's in the low 70s for his sprint. And then there's just a couple of guys uh, who have even mid 60s. So uh, don't expect us to actually do anything. I mean, we'll be, kind of be lucky to get in the top 10. Uh, but the main reason for that is just to make sure that nothing happens with a Venipol. Uh, we want to keep him safe. And it's looking like we have cobbled sections, but I'm not seeing anything. <laughs> 13.5k now, so I think we'll kind of pick it up at about 11. Which is now. All right, so ultimately it is a Venable we're going to ride for, but Peterson is the one to lead him out. Uh, McNulty, I don't want caught up in it. I want to preserve his top 10, so he'll be involved. Gottwald's got a little bit of a sprint to him, and then it's, oh my goodness, Dianigi, what has happened to you? Is anybody else behind you? Yeah, Gino Mater. Gino Mater is done. Uh, that's not good because he was close to somebody who could be involved. Uh, we'll try to get you up here, but that means we don't have any sort of actual lead out right now. Felchie's here, good. Garfield is here, good. Garfield will use your gel, and you're going to have to ease your way forward. Okay, 9k to go. Just 47. This is what I was talking about. We've got two riders that have been dropped, Dianiki and Mater. And all of a sudden, you got a small peloton with just 8K to go. And Garfield's done. Felchi, I probably should have used your gel a little sooner. Okay, Gottwald, let's get yours going. And now it's down to just 35. So there are definitely riders who are getting caught out today. 6k to go. That's your usual cue to use everybody's gel. 5k to go. And we're finally to the front. Felchi's going to push the tempo. Uh, that didn't work. There you go. Gottwald. 26 riders left. More and more getting dropped. 3.7k to go. 3k to go. Full speed for Gottwald, but not sprint. 2.5. 24 riders left. And we're going to start the sprint here. Peterson coming out of the corner. There's a lot of back and forth here. Okay, we're seeing an actual sprinter take off. Grunewagen. Uh, he's going awfully early. Viviani is way behind him. Venipole, you can see just how far he's getting dropped at the moment. 
uh, Nick Nolte. Dude, you can as well. Peterson looks like he's going to have himself a third place finish. And Eventpool, I think, might have a top 10. Grinovagan takes the win. Viviani second. Peterson does claim third. Cobrelli fourth. Kristoff. Adam Yates is there in sixth. Venepole takes eighth. McNulty ninth on the stage. There's Bernal. Gutwald comes in. There's Lopez in 17th, so neither of the two competitors lost time. But there might be some other names missing. See if they give any time gaps or not. I'd say these guys are definitely going to get time gaps. The ones closer up, maybe, maybe not. Time cut's already been hit. Could you imagine that? Final stage on the flat and you're eliminated on time. And it's already happened many minutes ago and there's still somebody out there. And actually, I think it's Vincenzo Nibali. It is Nibali out on the final day. That's pretty bad. General, two, achievement, woo, woo. <sighs> okay. We've done it. <laughs> now we could crack open that champagne. Mads Peterson, third on the stage. Uh, no time differences until 90th. So the first 89 riders all get same time, even though they all came in in groups, bunches, and work. Eliminated from the group long, long before. Quintana withdraws. Oof. Ouch. Sucks to be Vincenzo Nibali and Nairo Quintana. How did Nibali, who came in like 40 minutes late, be credited at 21? He was uh, he was eliminated on time. But anyway, Vettapol claims the stage. Uh, the... Overall race victory, GC, Lopez, Yates, Bernal, Bennett, Carapaz. Dropping out of the standings on the final stage was in seventh place. Nairo Quintana out of there. So McNulty inherits seventh place. Sosa inherits a top ten overall. Yikes. How many racers finished? 167. Only one was eliminated from time, though it looked like somebody should have been out on time today. Points classification, we keep that position. Viviani only moves up to third. He didn't win the stage, he took second, so he didn't end up passing Lopez. He did get enough points to get ahead of Adam Yates on the final stage. There's Grunewagen. Uh, So we win the points classification as well. KOM goes to Enrique Moss. Under 25's jersey is ours by a wide margin over Bernal. Uh, McNulty claims third there. And team classification, no change. But there you have it. We have won the cheer of Italia. Some of you gave comments of support thinking that I could win it and that it was my race to lose and I I honestly just could not get myself to believe it playing on this difficulty especially with a rider of a Venables caliber I I just thought it was going to be really tough and that was tough that was absolutely tough that was not easy But we pulled it off nonetheless. With that, Eventipol goes to the top of the World Tour standings for now. It's a first Grand Tour and a lot of points there. So I can see how, why he moved ahead of Alaphilippe at this point. He's not going to stay there. Uh, we're not contending GC in the other two races. At least I don't expect to do so. He leads the Super Prestige as well. It's Philipson, though, with eight wins. Fedipole has four. And the team classification. Wow. 
ten thousand world tour points. And there it is, seven thousand. Seven thousand super prestige points already just into June. So we're basically halfway through the season. And we have seven thousand points. We've almost matched what we had last year. Almost to it. I mean, we're really close on the points now. That's going to do it for this episode. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to hit that like button, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there, and bye for now.